If you fly two or three inch cine whoops, or in my case this ultralight four inch, there's every chance that you're in the market for a good quality 4K camera. So today I'm out here in the middle of nowhere putting this Hawkeye Firefly 4K thumb through its paces to see if it really can deliver quality gyroflow ready 4K video at a sensible price. And more importantly, to check out their claim that it's the lightest 4K camera on the market. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Until relatively recently, if you wanted a lightweight 4K action camera, the choice was limited to things like these. Stripped down, naked style GoPros, the SMO 4K or similar, and they all weigh about 25 to 30 grams. And they actually work out to be quite expensive. Even if you build one yourself, you have to factor in the cost of the original camera. This Hawkeye Firefly 4K thumb camera weighs 15 and a half grams. It delivers 4K, 30 frames per second, H.265 video that includes gyro data for stabilization with gyro flow. All from this one tiny package that costs about $60 or around 50 pounds in the UK. And that's a pretty remarkable spec, especially at that price. I chose 2.5K at 50 frames per second using a 4 by 3 aspect ratio that I cropped in Final Cut to be 16 by 9 just so it fits nicely onto YouTube. Now there are some similar cameras around with this same form factor like the Cadex Peanut or the Insta360 GO 2 but they're twice the price or they don't do 4K or both. The only real competitor is the Runcan Thumb 4K Pro, which is more expensive and it is heavier. Apart from the size, this Hawkeye Firefly has got an awful lot going for it. It uses a Sony 12 megapixel sensor with a 170 degree field of view and the video resolution is up to 4K at 50 frames a second. You also have the choice of 16 by nine or four by three aspect ratio. Well, almost. And it saves the video in an MP4 H.265 format on an SD card that you slide in the side here. And it's got this nice little safety clip to stop the card popping out if you crash. And the main reason they use H.265 is to keep the video file size small, which gives you more storage space. You'll need external power for this because there's no internal battery and it needs anything between 5 and 23 volts. So if you've got a spare back on your flight controller, you can use that. Or Firefly provide these very useful balanced power leads for the 2, 4S and 6S. And these make it really easy to swap between quads because there's no soldering involved. So you just plug that into the balance lead on your battery and then you can just plug this into the camera like that. Now this connector on the back there's also a trigger input so you can use that to start recording using a spare output UART on your flight controller and transmitter 
and there's also a video output. So with some fiddling, you can use this as your FPV camera as well. And they claim a latency of 50 milliseconds, so it might be worth a try. And if you want to, you could use this as a 4K webcam, which is interesting. The included lens cover is removable and it can be replaced with an ND filter if you want, which is available separately. Now, as well as these balanced power leads, they also provide a couple of USB-C to AV leads like this. And one of these is marked as DJI, if you can see it on there. Oh, it's upside down, there we go. And this is specifically for plugging into your V1 or V2 DJI goggles. You just plug that in there and plug that into your goggles. And that use that to basically see the OSD on here and the setup pages. And it basically means that you can use this to connect to a monitor and just do all your setup and you get a separate standard sort of AV lead, which is an extension lead for this. So let's have a quick look at the setup pages. So I've got a separate monitor here. I've got the Firefly thumb plugged into the AV in, and we're gonna use the balance lead connector that they supply. And if we just power that up by plugging it in there, hopefully that should fire up. There we go. And they also supply the joystick here, which allows you to navigate the menus. And you just plug that into the other port at the top here. Okay, to get the menu up, you just press the left button. So let's have a look at the resolution. So the options are 4K at 50 frames a second, 4x3, no gyro data. So you're not going to be able to use that option with gyro flow. Next option is 4K at 30 frames a second. That will include gyro, um, but that output is 16 by nine. You don't get the four by three option. Then we've got 2K, 50 frames a second at four by three. We've got 2.5K, th 30 frames a second by four by three. And so we go down the line. In my tests, the one that I've been using that I think is very successful is a 2.5K P50 4x3. Okay, so let's just set that. Uh, you can choose the loop recording time. It will just go back and loop over the existing footage that's on the SD card. You can choose that. To be honest, 10 minutes is absolutely fine. You can choose wide dynamic range on or off. I found on works well. If you want to adjust the exposure up and down a couple of stops, you can if you like. I've left it at zero. And you can have audio on or off. Time lapse is another option if you want it. I'm not using that. Metering average works well for me, but you can experiment with center weighted or spot, whichever you like. And sharpness I've left at normal, although I think going soft would give a slightly better video, but normal is what I was recording at. Contrast, I've left at medium again. Auto recording just means it will start recording as soon as you apply power. There's a fixed frame rate option. If you want it, you can choose the shutter speed. I left it on auto, which seemed to work pretty well. Gyro log is on, otherwise you're not gonna be able to use gyro flow with this, with the data. Oh, well, you won't be producing any data. And then gyro calibration, which I've already done. You can basically calibrate the gyro that's built into there. And if we go back over here, there's another option, which is this guy here. You can set the date and time. All very good. Now do we go back? Just press enter, that works. Auto power off if you want, turn the sound on and off. You can choose the language that you want. Uh, frequency on 50 hertz, because I'm in the UK, but you can go to 60 hertz if you want. TV mode, you're just choosing whether it's NTSC or PAL. This monitor is NTSC, so I'm having to use that. 
but whatever works for your region. Ratio, well, that does depend on the resolution you set, but you can fiddle with that if you want to. ISO, I left it auto, but you have a choice here, all the way to 3200, which is impressive, but I left it on auto. Color, you can have black and white if you want, but that's not much use. White balance, again, there's a number of white balance presets. I didn't try any of these, although you might want to try those. Auto, I found, worked particularly well. And then we've got white balance auto lock. That simply means that once the white balance has been captured, when it starts recording, it doesn't change it whilst you're flying. Now, that can be an advantage because sometimes you can find when you're flying and you're pointing towards the sky, the white balance will fluctuate quite rapidly. And you get this sort of like sky pumping effect, which is quite a common thing. I left it off, which worked okay. You've got a need denoise option, field of view, small, medium, large. I've just left it on, medium. And you can rotate the image if you want. And there's a whole load of other bits and pieces. You can format the SD card from here as well. But that's it. All very good. All data will be deleted. No, we don't want to format that, so pick no. So there we go, that's pretty easy to set up and you can plug this into your DJI V1 or V2 goggles if you want to because that's got an AV in and that's what this lead is specifically designed for. If you're using a regular monitor, this isn't a regular monitor, this is a special one, but if you're using a regular monitor this is a more standard USB to AV connector and if you want to use the old school AV you've got a Fano plug there as well. So while I'm on the bench, let's have a quick check of the actual weight. Now, that says 15.1 grams, but that's without the lens protector. Now, if you put the lens protector on, and presumably this is gonna be the same if you've got the ND filter on, it's actually just over 16 grams, so 15 and a half grams, well, maybe, but it's still very light and much lighter than any of these naked GoPro style cameras. So let's get this powered up, just using the balance lead here. Get a couple of beeps and the LED comes on solid. And the color of this LED does depend on the resolution that you've got set. This is 2.5K, 50 frames a second. If you set it to 4K, for example, that will be red. So, to start recording, just press the button and you get a beep and this starts flashing. And to stop recording, just press it again. So it's all pretty straightforward. Now, if the camera beeps and the LED stays solid, it means either you haven't got an SD card plugged in or it needs formatting. Now, you can do that in the OSD on the monitor, like I showed you before, or you can just plug the joystick in and long press the up key for five seconds and it will start formatting. The LED will start flashing, and when it stops flashing, it's formatted. Now, do remember to hit this button to stop recording before you go ripping the power leads out of this when you're out flying. It really doesn't like that, and it can corrupt your video file. I suspect this is because there's no space in here for a large capacitor to hold the power on while it shuts down gracefully. Now you can also use this joystick to directly change the video resolution on the camera without having to use the OSD. There's just various combinations of button that you press, which is nice and straightforward. As we saw on the resolution setup page, you can choose between four by three or 16 by nine aspect ratio, but the four by three is only available at 2.5 K or lower. And that's technically going to be the best choice for running this footage through gyro flow to stabilize it. Fundamentally, it's got more pixels to play with and can make a much better job of stabilizing it. The downside is a slightly lower resolution to be honest, the difference between 4K and 2.5K when it's been uploaded and squished through YouTube's codecs isn't going to be that noticeable. 
Now, when you look at the SD card on here, you'll find the MP4 video file and a GCSV gyro data file. And you can just load those into Gyroflow. And with the latest version, 1.5.1, it automatically loaded the Hawkeye Thumb lens profile for me. Now, Firefly recommend optimum gyroflow settings for auto sync, and I'll leave a link to their tutorial in the video description. Or they have their own version of gyroflow ready to go with this camera. A few other quick things to note. The bracket on here is a pretty standard size for mounting using an M3 bolt, and they recommend using a soft mount like TPU. And it will apparently repair corrupted video files automatically, although I haven't tried this. All in all, I think this is okay. It's not great, but you have to consider the price. The footage is a little on the sharp and contrasty side, but that can be adjusted in the settings if you want. It's obviously not as good as a GoPro, but at around £50, which is close to a tenth of the price of the latest GoPro, and its weight of 15.5 grams, this is a pretty good choice for small cine whoops and sub 250 gram quads if budget and weight are your priority. Now, I don't have my Runcam Thumb Pro 4K anymore to compare it with, but I'm pretty sure I remember that was better quality, although it is more expensive. Anyway, do let me know what you think of this in the comments. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.